count it a real joy for the great privilege I have to be here with you today and your dear pastor. God bless you, Brother Tim. I see a lot of dear friends here this morning. If you would, please, open your Bible to 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4. Amen. First Thessalonians, chapter 4. And we'll read a few verses here from the eternal, everlasting Word of God. Yeah. Notice verse number 13, where the Bible says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we be the Lord Amen. wherefore comfort one another with these words notice that last verse wherefore comfort one another with these words. Brother Jerry, would you pray for me, son? Amen. Thank you, brother. I want to preach for just a few minutes on comforting words. Uh, what wonderful comforting words. Uh, you'll not find any more comforting words uh, in the entire Bible than what we've just read here this morning. Now, this church at Thessalonica had been started by Paul and uh, on one of his missionary journeys. Paul had preached unto them that uh, if they would repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that they would uh, uh, live e eternally, have everlasting life. And uh, then Paul went away. And uh, some of the believers had died. Uh, they had fallen asleep physically. And uh, the others sent word to Paul and said, we don't, we don't understand uh, you told us that if we'd accept uh, the Lord Jesus, uh, uh, that we'd live forever. And uh, he wrote back and said, Now, I don't want you to be ignorant uh, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not. He said, The Lord's going to descend from heaven with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. And uh, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air. And uh, uh, brother, uh, uh, these, uh, these words are very comforting to the child of God. Four words in, these, uh, in the message today that I'd like to give you that I hope uh, uh, will comfort your heart. Notice uh, uh, the first word is return. Uh, the Lord himself uh, shall... Uh, uh, come again. That uh, same Jesus, neighbor, uh, uh, that was born of a virgin in Bethlehem uh, and walked the shores of the blue Galilee uh, and ministered unto men uh, and was nailed to a cross uh, and laid in Joseph's new tomb. Uh, 
Thank God the third day he rose and ascended on high. That same Jesus Amen. is coming back again. Amen. And I'll tell you the Bible I hold in my hand today uh, uh, had a lot to say uh, about his first coming. Uh, it told us uh, where, uh, when he would be born. Uh, said the scepter shall not uh, depart from Judea until uh, shallow come. Uh, and then it told us where he would be born. Uh, said in a little town called Bethlehem. Uh, and then it told us uh, uh, that he would, uh, uh, how he would, uh, uh, how he would come into this world. I uh, said, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, uh, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. And that Bible I hold in my hand uh, uh, was so accurate uh, in predicting his first coming. Uh, I'll tell you, it has a whole lot more to say uh, about about his second coming neighbor uh, uh, when he comes back again. Uh, and I, I tell you that blesses my heart. Uh, uh, one day he will come uh, and rise, uh, raise the dead from their graves. Uh, and we which are alive will, will remain, will be caught up together uh, uh, with them in the clouds uh, in World War II. Uh, General Dwight D. Eisenhower uh, went to England to prepare for the invasion of Europe. Uh, uh, at the same time, uh, he appointed a man by the name of General Douglas MacArthur uh, to go to the Filipino Islands uh, and try to secure their independence. Uh, and on April the 6th, uh, 1942, uh, the island of Bataan fell. Uh, and they said uh, they did everything possible uh, to try to save it. Uh, and they said they just didn't have the manpower or the material uh, to hold that island. MacArthur sent word back to, the, to Washington and said, uh, uh, you're worried about uh, the mother in the living room uh, while they're raping the daughter in the bedroom, uh, uh, meaning the Filipino islands. Uh, uh, they had to leave the island of Bataan uh, and they went to the island of Corregidor and uh, that island became known as the Crimson Rock. Uh, literally thousands of gallons uh, of American blood was spilled on that island uh, uh, trying to hold a Corregidor. Uh, the Japs came day by day uh, and night after night they bombed our water supply. Uh, they uh, bombed our infiltration camps uh, and on and on they came. Uh, they said they were actually walking on the bodies of their dead comrades. Uh, uh, but they came uh, and soon Washington or uh, Washington sent word to MacArthur and told him he'd have to leave uh, Philippine, the Philippines. Uh, and they said it was a terrible day uh, when MacArthur left uh, the Philippines uh, and uh, said uh, uh, they were, uh, the people were filled with anxiety uh, and fearful. Uh, uh, they didn't know what to expect. Uh, uh, he, was, uh, he was prepared to leave uh, and uh, he said words. Uh, uh, that would later became no, uh, became uh, uh, famous words throughout America. He said, "I must evacuate uh, uh, the American forces." Uh, uh, but he said, I make you this promise. Uh, I shall return. Yes. Hallelujah. Uh, and I'll tell you, neighbor, uh, uh, no doubt they scanned the skies. They wondered, uh, uh, would he ever come back again? Uh, but one day the skies were filled uh, uh, with airplanes, uh, uh, hundreds of them. Uh, as soon the, the Filipinos could see uh, uh, the red, white, and blue markings on those planes. Uh, and soon the, uh, the sky was filled uh, with little white dots. Uh, it was the paratroopers. Uh, uh, they were coming. The people uh, uh, ran up and down the streets uh, uh, shouting, MacArthur has come back. Uh, I'll tell you, neighbor, uh, uh, my mind goes to that little upper room uh, uh, where the Lord Jesus sat with his disciples uh, and he said, I must go away. Uh, but I make you this promise. Uh, I shall return. I'm coming back again to receive you unto myself. I'll tell you, the Lord's going to come, neighbor, just like he said he would. 
a comforting word about his return. Yes. And then a comforting word about the resurrection. Amen. Verse 16. Uh, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Uh, my daddy, my mama, and your loved ones that died physically, neighbor, uh, uh, only their body died. Uh, death don't touch the soul and the spirit. Uh, the Bible said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Now, I'll tell you, Paul said, I know if this earthly house be dissolved, I have another uh, building of God not made with hand. Uh, their body died, neighbor. And uh, we, uh, we took them over there on the side of the hill or down in the valley and we laid them to rest. And I'll tell you, the Lord's coming back. Amen. And uh, we'll see them again. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. And uh, all of us, everybody in here, you've got loved ones over there on the side of the hill or down in the valley. And what a wonderful day, preacher, it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, when that trumpet shall sound uh, and that sound will run across the hills and the valleys uh, and the brother ever where there's a sleeping saint of God uh, uh, their bodies will be raised uh, I, t I wrote this down a poem I wrote years ago uh, it said a coffin uh, a grave a tear a sad farewell to someone so dear uh, but this is just for a little while. Uh, soon the grief shall turn to a smile. Uh, when once again we shall arise uh, and meet our loved ones in the sky. Uh, thank God uh, there's going to be a resurrection. Amen. Uh, the last time I saw my daddy, I was pastor of a little church over in Royston, Georgia. And uh, my daddy came by early one Tuesday or one Monday morning and he said I, I've got to go up into North Carolina to see my mom and dad and uh, I said dad please don't go I said uh, I'm having a preacher's meeting tomorrow and the, these preachers uh, uh, they'll need something to eat and uh, I want you to be here to help me uh, with the barbecue and everything to feed them boys and he said, uh, all right, son. He said, I'll just go up there and, and back. And, and he said, I'll see you in the morning. I didn't know that was going to be the last time I ever heard my daddy's voice. Uh, some of you younger folks, these scriptures don't mean as much to you as it do us older people. See, We've made a lot of trips to the cemetery. Yeah. And we've laid to rest the bodies of our mamas and daddies and our little ones and our friends. And I'll tell you, these scriptures ought to comfort our hearts. Amen. Uh, the Lord's going to come. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, they'll raise from the dead and we'll be together with them again. The last time some of you saw your mom and dad, maybe daddy was old and frail and his back was bent. And uh, you had to see him go through struggles to try to live. But I'll tell you the next time you see him, yeah. his back will be straight now, yeah. and he'll walk and his youth will be renewed. Uh, the, some, the last time some of you uh, saw your mama, she probably uh, was old and frail and you probably had to uh, hold a glass of water to her lips. Uh, 
Uh, but I'll tell you the next time you see her, uh, her beauty will be renewed, neighbor. Uh, and uh, look, uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be together again. Uh, uh, thank God. I'm glad I have that hope in my heart today. I remember we brought my daddy's body home there to old home place. A lot of friends and neighbors. Miss Glenda, you and Tommy came. And uh, a lot of people filed by my daddy's car. There at the old home. I remember standing beside my mama. She laid her hands on the coffin. And then she reached over and touched his old head. She said these words. She said, 37 years ago, I made you a vow. She said, I've kept it. She said, today, I'm going to make you another vow. When the trumpets sound, I'll slip my hand in yours again, and we'll live forever. Oh, my God. What a wonderful, wonderful blessing. Comforting word about the resurrection. And then there's a comforting word about the rapture. We which are alive and remain should be called to find me some Kleenex, son. We that are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. Thank you. There's, gonna, there's a change going to take place, neighbor. Uh, I, I, look, this is the Holy King James Bible. I'm pretty, it ain't a fairy tale. Uh, it's real, neighbor. And uh, this is not some fantasy that we're standing up here talking about. I'll tell you, we're going on a trip the astronauts have never been on. Uh, we're going on a trip, and we ain't going to need no uh, a space uh, suit or uh, uh, all that. I'll tell you, the Bible says we're going to uh, be gone in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. And forever we'll be with the Lord. Hallelujah. We're on the threshold, preacher. I believe that. Oh, my heart. Amen. The coming of the Lord, the rapture of the saints is here. It's near. It's so near. Uh, just like Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Uh, we that are saved uh, and remain, we're going to be caught up uh, and death uh, will not uh, uh, have any hold on us. Death will lose its sting, neighbor, uh, and uh, we'll be caught up. Uh, this old corruptible uh, uh, is going to put on incorruption. Hallelujah. And I want to ask you something today. Are you ready? If it happened today, would you go? Would you go? Would you be with those in the air? God's going to get us out of here, neighbor. Amen. As sure as I'm standing here, uh, the rapture is just about to take place. Yeah. And we're going to leave here. Now, if there's any doubt where you stand with the Lord this morning, let me plead with you. Leave your seat today. Come about this old-fashioned old. Get right with God. Amen. The time's here, neighbor. All over this world, people have come to the realization that the Lord has come. And I call his bride away. Let me give you one last thought today. In these verses I read, there's a comforting word about reunion. Yeah. We'll be caught up with them. I know 
the resurrection is going to weed out a lot of weakness and infirmities. And uh, these old wind perfect bodies uh, uh, will be changed. And uh, it says caught up with them. And we'll know them Amen. as they are, neighbor. Uh, maybe it's been just a little while since some of you may have left the body of a loved one over there in some old cemetery somewhere. And uh, it grieves your heart to turn and walk away from a cemetery plot. But the Lord's coming. Amen. And there's going to be a resurrection, neighbor. And uh, that old song we used to sing, I'll meet you in the morning by the bright riverside. Hallelujah. What a blessing. What a hope. A lot of family reunions take place every year. Uh, my wife and I went to her family reunion. Please pray for my wife. She's she's not doing good at all. She's in bad shape. We went to her family reunion, and uh, people gathered in, but there were some that were not there. There was a lot of them that miss, was missing. And you know how that is. You go to family reunions. There's always somebody missing. But if they were saved, neighbor, it'll just be a little while till you see them again. There's an urgency in this day, neighbor. To be ready to meet God. There's a, I mean, there's an urgency. Amen. Uh, we're seeing, preacher, we're, we are actually seeing the marks and the actual happenings that lets us know the tribulation is upon us. A time like this world has never seen. It's coming. And we're seeing the marks of it all around us. But thank God Almighty, I'll be gone. Amen. Amen. I will be gone. Let's bow our heads. Preacher, you come, please. If God has spoken to your heart this morning, if you're not where you ought to be with the Lord, if your heart's cold, down the road behind you, there's been mistakes and sorrows and heartache. And you're just not as close as you used to be. I want to invite you to come to this old-fashioned altar. But if you won't come, would you lift your hand and let me pray for you? Just slip your hand right up and right back down. Say, preacher, I need, I need some prayer. Anybody? God bless you, dear brother, your sister. This is the Lord's house. And the Lord's here today. And you can find help. If you're not saved this morning, you can get saved today. You can come. There'll be somebody take a King James Bible and show you. Word of God, what it takes and what you must do to be saved. Our Father, touch these hearts today. Comfort those that need comfort in this morning. May the Word of God find a dwelling place in their hearts today. These comforting words, may they always remember, there's a better day coming. Thank you for this dear pastor and his wife and family. Lord God, please bless Brother Tim. Keep your hand of mercy on him. Lord, use him here in this community among these people. 
Lord, may this church rally around him and hold him up and love him. Help him carry the load. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand, brother. If the